Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionados, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about platelet agrigometry, including the famous RIPA. RIPA, what the flip is that? This is Ristocetin induced platelet aggregation. With that said, now let's get started. Question of the day What's the most common cause of a prolonged bleeding time? Some people will say, oh, it's Bernard Soulier syndrome. This is very rare. I want the most common. How about scurvy? This is not the 15th century. Get your head out of your sphincter. The most common cause of a prolonged bleeding time today is freaking aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid, because as you know, aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase. When you inhibit cyclooxygenase, this will lead to decrease thromboxane A2. When there is decreased thromboxane A2, there is decreased platelet aggregation. When there is no platelet aggregation, the bleeding time will be prolonged because it takes longer to form a platelet plug and stop the bleeding. In the previous video, we have talked about bleeding time. It's to measure or determine platelet function. Normally is three to seven minutes. Bleeding time is prolonged in case of thrombocytopenia, thrombasthenia, and vascular disorders. And we have talked about that before. This is my playlist on bleeding and coagulation disorders. Please watch these videos in order. I promise you, you will love hematology. Steps of hemostasis include vasoconstriction, temporary platelet plug, we call this primary hemostasis, and then coagulation, we call this secondary hemostasis. In number two, the hero here is platelets, but in secondary hemostasis, the heroes are the coagulation factors. After that, you have fibrolysis and then regeneration and repair. Bleeding and coagulation, we start with vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and then fibrinolysis. Primary hemostasis, we have physiology, pathology, and pharmacology. What's the pharmacology? Antiplatelets, including but not limited to aspirin and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. You have the P2Y12 inhibitors such as clopidogrel, prasugrel. You have the GP2B3A inhibitors such as apsiximab, terofiban, eptifabetide, ticagrelor, and you have even phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors such as dipyridamol and silostazole. Cool! How do you measure primary hemostasis? Platelet count, bleeding time. Platelet number, platelet function. But is it only bleeding time for platelet function? No, we have many tests. We have bleeding time and we have today's topic, agrigometry. Primary hemostasis versus secondary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis, who is the hero? Platelets. In secondary, coagulation factor, what is the end result? A platelet plug. But here, a very strong fibrin thrombus trapping the red blood cells in between. Tests. Platelet count, bleeding time, and today's topic, platelet aggregometry. I love it including the famous Ristocetin-induced platelet aggregation. And after that, how about secondary hemostasis tests? We have the PT and PTT. Those are the tests that are used today. In the past, we had thrombin time, also known as coagulation time, also known as it's rarely used nowadays, except in the textbook of your old dinosaur, aka professor. What are the symptoms in primary hemostasis defect, mucocutaneous or superficial bleeding, such as what? Such as petechia purpura ecchymosis, this is the skin. I said mucocutaneous, here is the cutaneous. How about the muco? You have easy bruising, you have gingival bleeding, you have epistaxis, which is by far the most common, you can have menorrhagia, etc, etc. How about secondary hemostasis anatomical? This is deep tissue bleeding, such as what? Bleeding into joints bleeding into muscles, intracranial hemorrhage, bleeding after or during tooth extraction, like excessive bleeding. Platelets, we have two parameters, platelet number, platelet function. How do you test for platelet number? Platelet count. How do you test for platelet function? You have bleeding time and platelet aggregometry. Cool. How about the condition in which platelet numbers is down? It's thrombocytopenia. How about the condition where platelet function is down? It's called thrombasthenia. Example here is aplastic anemia. Examples here are Bernard Soulier and Glensman, among many others. How do you measure platelet number? How do you measure platelet function? How do you measure platelet number? Manual counting, the old way. Automated counting, the modern way. Optical counting, flow cytometry, and platelet count ratio method. How to measure platelet function? First, you need the platelet number. So any of these five methods, plus bleeding time, which was the topic of last video, platelet aggregometry, which is the topic of today's video. What the flip is platelet aggregometry? Literally, you're trying to induce 
and stimulate platelet aggregation and try to measure it. How do I stimulate and induce platelet aggregation? You add a platelet aggregation agonist, such as what? You have many options. You have ADP, you have epinephrine, you have collagen, and you even have ristocetin and the famous arachidonic acid. Some Socratic dialogue. How can we stop bleeding in a small blood vessel? You need a platelet plug. What's the name of this? Primary hemostasis. What are the steps? Adhesion, activation, secretion, aggregation, fusion of the platelets. How can we evaluate platelet function in cases of primary hemostasis? You need many tests. You need the platelet count, bleeding time, platelet aggregometry. You add an agonist, whether it's ADP, epinephrine, collagen, ristocetin, or arachidonic acid, and then you have other tests. Bleeding time for platelet function is in the books. This test has many limitations, including the thickness of your skin, the site of the test. We need a better, more sophisticated way. It's called platelet agrogometry. What are the problems with the bleeding time? It's affected by the intracapillary pressure, affected by the size and depth of the wound, affected by the skin thickness at the puncture site, and that's why platelet agrogometry is better, but it's more expensive. What are the steps of platelet plug formation? First, you need platelet adhesion, then platelet activation, then platelet aggregation. During the test of platelet aggregometry, you're trying to test for platelet aggregation. How do we induce the platelets to aggregate together? Add an agonist such as ADP, epinephrine, collagen, ristocetin, or arachidonic acid. By the way, I have premium cardiac pharmacology course on my website. It has 50 freaking videos and cases and notes. Go to medicosisperfectionalist.com. How do we make the platelets aggregate? First, you get a blood sample from the patient, preferably in a blue top tube because it has sodium citrate. This is a citrated blood sample. Cool! And then you add an agonist to the blood sample, such as what? ADP, epinephrine, collagen, ristocetin, arachidonic acid, and even thrombin receptor activating peptide or TRAP. Not to be confused with tartrate-resistant acid phosphatase, which was also TRAP. Can you please help me reach 250,000 subscribers by the end of the month? And then I will give you something cool. Aggregometry, baby. What's the aim? To measure or determine platelet function. What do you mean by platelet function? I mean adhesion, aggre aggregation, and secretion. Not aggression, I'm sorry. To assess primary hemostasis. Requirements. Platelet adhesion requires normal von Willebrand. Platelet aggregation requires normal platelet membrane, platelet activation pathway, and plasma fibers. But, but hey, medical it's called platelet aggregometry. Why it is, is it testing adhesion? Because in order for the platelets to aggregate, they need to adhere first. Duh. What is the technique? You get some blood from the patient, preferably citrated blood in a blue top tube. Or you can get platelet-rich plasma, not whole blood like this, just plasma. And then you add a freaking agonist, ADP, epinephrine, collagen, ristocetin, arachidonic acid, or trap. Platelet aggregometry. What are the methods? We have many. We have classical platelet aggregometry. We have whole blood aggregometry. Light scattering method. Verify now assay. Normal results. So here is vertical and horizontal. Before we talk about any graph, you need to know what's on the horizontal and what's on the vertical. Horizontal represents the time. Vertical here depicts platelet aggregation. So the higher the platelet aggregation, you'll find it higher on the curve or on the vertical axis. This is also for amount of light passing through the solution. Cool. So then you add the agonist, such as ADP or ristocetin or collagen or epinephrine, etc. Once you add what's gonna happen to the platelets, they are going to aggregate and they will give you two peaks, like two waves. First wave, aggregation. Second wave, aggregation. This first wave is called primary aggregation. The second wave is called secondary aggregation. Primary aggregation depends on the direct interaction of the agonist, which is ADP, with the agonist receptor on the surface of the platelet. How about the second wave or the secondary aggregation? It depends on the release, the secretion of dense granules from the platelets, including serotonin, ADP, etc. Why are we talking about optical density and light and all of this? Here is the deal. Here is a test tube containing plasma and the platelets have not aggregated yet. Can the light pass? No, because the platelets are blocking all of the light. Only very, very few amount of light can pass or very little amount. How about when the platelets actually aggregate? Light cannot pass here because the platelets are blocking the light. How about here? I cannot. How about here and here? Yep. So when the platelets aggregate, more light will pass than platelets who did not aggregate. 
So we call this increased optical density. Density is the resistance to the light passing through the tube. How about here? Decrease optical density because lots of light passed. So when you have increased optical density, you have decreased the amount of light passing through the solution. But on the other hand, when you decrease optical density, you have increased the amount of light passing through the solution. So if you look at this beautiful curve, as the platelets start to aggregate, what's going to happen to the optical density? It's going to decrease. So optical density here is lower than the optical density here. The greater the platelet aggregation, which is here, the lower the optical density, which is here, and the greater the amount of light passing through the solution. Okay, platelet aggregometry in a nutshell, it has become the gold standard to measure or determine platelet function, adhesion, secretion, aggregation. How about the bleeding time? It's garbage. It depends on the skin thickness, the puncture wound, etc. The technique, easy, citrated whole blood or platelet-rich plasma. The agonist, ADP, epinephrine, collagen, aristocetin, or acid, and trap. As you add the agonist, you get two waves, primary aggregation and secondary aggregation of the platelets. What is Ristocetin-induced platelet aggregation? Same thing, it's a platelet aggregometry where the agonist was Ristocetin. What is Ristocetin? Ristocetin is a substance that forces GP1B, which is this receptor, to bind to von Willebrand factor, which is this protein. When they bind together, of course, platelets adhere. When they adhere, they will later aggregate. Cool. And that's why Ristocetin-induced platelet aggregation will be abnormal in cases of von Willebrand disease, where the von Willebrand factor is defective, and bernard Soulier syndrome, where the GP1P receptor is defective. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. And that's why you can manage both diseases giving desmopressin. Why would giving desmopressin help these diseases? Because desmopressin will force von Willebrand factor to be expressed, and then it will force the receptor to bind to the von Willebrand factor. It makes sense. And that's why RIPA is normal in case of Glensman thrombostenia. Why? Because Glensman thrombostenia, the problem is in the GP2B3A, not in the GP1B. Uh-huh. Aspirin therapy, because aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase, which will decrease thromboxin A2, but aspirin has nothing to do with the GP1B or the von Willebrand factor. That's why RIPA is normal. Brilliant! We'll talk about Bernard Soulier in the next video. Question of the day. This is the 19th question. The previous questions are in this glorious playlist called Bleeding and Coagulation Disorders. What disease is tartrate-resistant acid phosphatase positive? Let me know the answer in the comment section and you'll find the correct answer in the next video. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. Share my videos. You can support me here or here. Get my cardiac pharmacology course, my antibiotics course and my 50 hematology cases at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist where medicine makes perfect sense.